Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. So, in the past, I've conducted a number of tests to see just how crudely a gun barrel could be made and still perform you know, satisfactorily. Uh, and in the course of those tests, we've seen a number of very crude barrels that actually performed remarkably well. And so that's certainly uh, some useful data for me as an engineer, designer, or in this case, hobbyist gun builder. However, there comes a time to push the other end of the spectrum as well. And so that's what we're doing today. Uh, I have here a piece of 1144 stress-proof rod, and my intent is to cut a piece of this rod and machine it into the best barrel that I possibly can with the uh, tooling, the machinery that I have. Uh, I can't say as I've ever heard of anyone making a barrel out of 1144 steel before, but it seems like a good choice because it's considered a high-strength free machining steel. Um, so it should give us a, a relatively good surface finish and still be you know, a, a nice strong barrel. It may not be as wear resistant as a chromoly alloy like 4140 or 4150. That's probably why it's not used commercially, at least that would be my guess. Um, but where I'm making a barrel for a single shot pistol, uh, the number of rounds put through this barrel over the course of my lifetime is going to be pretty low, and so I don't think that kind of wear resistance is really going to be an issue for us. Anyway, so my plan is to cut a piece of this, uh, chuck it up in my lathe and drill out a center hole, and then ream that hole to the finished bore diameter with a custom homemade reamer, after which we will rifle it with a custom homemade rifling button, uh, probably chamber it for 45 ACP, and then we'll install it on the Utah pistol and see what it's capable of. I am a little bit limited uh, by the length of my drill bits, which is kind of a superficial limitation because I could certainly go buy some longer drill bits, uh, or for that matter I could make my own. But to keep things simple for this project, uh, I'm just going to cut the barrel short enough that I can drill out the initial pilot hole with a standard drill bit that I already have. And without further ado, let's get started. Well, here's our barrel blank so far. I drilled it, reamed it, and cut the threads on it. Uh, the bore came out beautifully smooth. So, next step will be to rifle it, and then chamber it, and then I think I'll probably just flame blue it for a finish.
And there's my completed barrel. Went ahead and crowned the muzzle there. The rifling came out a little bit rough. Uh, just on the edges of the grooves, there's a little bit of roughness. You know, my thought was just to put a nut on the threads and then you know, use that as a stop so that I could drive the button through the barrel using my rifling press. But ironically, that 7 8 14 nut would not fit in the press, and so I was obliged to drive the button manually using a good old-fashioned hammer and a piece of drive rod. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe if the motion of the button had been smoother, the end result of the rifling would also have been smoother. Um, so there is some room for improvement, but I think this is unquestionably a more sophisticated barrel than some of the iron pipe barrels that I've been experimenting with lately. It's probably my most refined homemade gun barrel to date. And at this point, I think all that remains is to take it out and test it. Okay, so I fired a 10-shot group here, and right off, I'd say that for shooting a handgun offhand, you know, I wasn't using a bench rest or anything, using run-of-the-mill factory ammunition, at 10 yards, that's a pretty good group. But just for comparison's sake, why don't I go ahead and put up another target, and I'll shoot a 10-shot group with this Springfield XDM, and we can compare the accuracy of my homemade Utah pistol to a commercial match grade firearm, both in 45 ACP, both shooting the same run of the mill factory ammunition. This one happens to be a box of blazer brass. Okay, so it looks like the sights on my Springfield XD are definitely zeroed a little bit better than this red dot that I just slapped on this new barrel for the Utah. No surprises there. I would concede that this group might be a little bit tighter than this one, at least if we throw out the outliers, but they're really pretty comparable. You know, these are one inch squares on the target, so Throwing out that one outlier, this is basically a two inch group. And same thing over here, if we throw out those two outliers, that's a two inch group. So maybe I've got a little ways to go in my uh, barrel making skills yet before I can compete effectively in the match grade precision barrel market. But I'm still pretty satisfied with the accuracy of this homemade barrel. 
Just as a final point of curiosity, I think I'm going to set up a stack of water jugs and see if I can capture a bullet fired from this new barrel. Well, here's our bullet. Uh, it is a little bit mangled. Um, this was actually number two. My first shot kind of went through the top half of the jugs and went through seven jugs and then missed the last few and escaped. So the second shot, I deliberately shot low to take advantage of the water that was left. And after going through several jugs, it buried itself in the ground and hit a couple of small rocks which left those uh, indentations in the bullet. Nevertheless, uh, I think we can still see what we're looking for in this bullet. You know, counting the rifling marks, you can see that it was definitely fired from a six-groove barrel with very wide lands and narrow grooves, which is exactly what I made. Um, and then I'm also noticing these score marks uh, left by ridges of raised metal on the edges of the grooves, which is not necessarily desirable, but it is typical of barrels rifled by my DIY uh, button rifling method. Uh, now, I would imagine that in time that raised metal would be worn down, and so if I continue to use this barrel and, you know, keep it clean between use, uh, the accuracy might actually improve with time, and those score marks, at least, would become less and less noticeable with wear. So, uh, I don't know if I'll ever shoot the barrel enough to put that hypothesis to the test, but at any rate, that's what we can surmise from what we've learned from looking at this bullet. You know, whatever field we may be in, whether it's gunsmithing or fine woodworking, you know, outdoor hiking, some other form of athletics, from time to time often it's good to uh, undertake projects that sort of test the limits of our capabilities. Uh, and to that end, I certainly found this barrel project uh, informative as to understanding the current limits of my barrel making capabilities. Uh, so this was certainly a useful project for me in that regard and hopefully you found it entertaining as well. In any case, thank you for watching the Idaho Show.